following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, making her win the ring. She is the mistress of a thousand holes, the original AWO Joshi Champion, Akira Meredith. Good evening, wrestling fans from the world-famous AWL Arena in Tokyo, Japan. This is the Animated Wrestling League, episode 293. We are beginning tonight on another step on the road to redemption. And this is a massive hurdle for Akira Merine to overcome a rematch with the woman who took the AWL Joshi Championship and handed her her first ever defeat in the squared circle. That's right, and this time, she's got backup. On her opponent, being accompanied by the modern day Amazon, Athena Jane. From Roanoke, Virginia, Jackie Bolgu. Athena Jane leading Jackie Molyneux to the ring. Athena Jane, the modern-day Amazon, set to compete later tonight in a Joshi Division reshuffle match. Stay tuned for that. Also, the Losers Tournament will take place this evening. Two Atomicos matches to finish us off, and even more action in the Joshi Division. It's all to come tonight on the Animated Wrestling League. Last week we saw Akira Merine defeat Betty Bubbles in the first step on the road to redemption. This is going to be a bigger challenge. As we start off here, senior official Joey Bob Ganoush of the famous Bob Ganoush wrestling family has the call. Ten minutes on the clock in this singles non-title match. Kick to the small of the uh, kneecap, the back of the kneecap. Good strategy when dealing with a bigger opponent. Akira Merine, one of the most intelligent wrestlers in the AWL. Oh, uh, but sometimes you just can't overcome pure size. This is going to be, once again, strength versus skill. Last time these two fought, strength won out. Unfortunately for Jackie Bonu, her first title defense against Dragonus, unsuccessful. So these are literally the only two women in the world who can claim to be former AWL Joshi champions. And look at that, rolls through into a leg bar. Or a knee bar, I'm not quite sure which has got the, uh, the placement there, but it doesn't matter. Jackie Molyu able to escape. America versus Japan in this international competition of professional wrestling. Catch of the foot and a double leg takedown, boom! If I sound a little unusual tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if you see or hear pauses in my speech, that is because I have, over the last 24 hours, developed another freaking cold. I hate being sick. I hate being stuffed up when I'm trying to do commentary. It really sucks. And look behind the referee. There you see it, a steel chair slid into the ring. Athena Jane up to her old tricks, unfortunately, as both combatants return to the squared circle. And now Athena Jane now going after the... Oh, wait a minute! The, ch the former champion, the fir first former champion, with the chair for half a second, but that serves as a distraction. And uh, Jackie Molyneux able to take advantage. I'm flustered here because I'm so used to calling Akira Merine the champion. And she isn't this time. Wait, roll. Wait, no, no, no. Roll through into the half crab, but so close to the ropes. And that's the problem when you're dealing with such a tall opponent. And if you're a submission expert. The taller your opponent, the more likely they are to get a limb across the plane of the ropes. And there we go, Heidi Kanrana, and the referee finally gets rid of that steel chair. You do not want to get into a striking match with Jackie Molnu. Long line of professional boxers in her family. Right hand by the cha by the four ah, by Akira Merine. <laughs> and this has got to be so personal for, for Marine because not only your first ever career loss, but the loss that cost you your championship, and you finally get your chance at a rematch. 
The mistress of a thousand holds going in and out of the ring in order to keep the count as low as possible. Trying to soften up her opponent. Looks like going for the arm or the shoulder. That could be a setup for the seated Manjigatame. But Akira looking for something. Yes, she's got something. Yes, STF. STF in her version of it. Her personal version of the STF. Nowhere to go, and that's it! Submission! Akira Merene on the road to redemption gets herself a massive bit of revenge. Look at the face of Akira Merene. She locks in that step over toe hold face lock. And there we go, tapping right on the hand of the Mistress of a Thousand Holds. Here is your winner, the Mistress of a Thousand Holds, Akira Merene. That has got to feel good. Athena Jane looking on. Nothing she can do about it. Athena Jane has not been a good, uh, has not been a friend of Akira Merene. Let's put it that way. So that's got to feel nice. Up next, Joshi Tag Team Action. Possibility of finding challengers for the Joshi Tag Team titles at AWL 300. The following contest is going to go one fall in the Joshi Tag Team Division. Introducing first, and you know, winning the ring, the Tag Team Combination of Joya and Torrevente Fuego. The ladies of Lucha have been sitting on two points ever since the tag Matsuri. They picked up those two points in the tag team gauntlet. What was considered a career making, or at least an impressive outing for this, up until now, fairly low ranked team. And this may be one of the last times we hear that song. A little later tonight, the male members of the Empire Faction will compete in the Losers Tournament. And careers are on the line. On to their opponents. Making their win the ring the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The tag team combination of Jessica Kidd and Emily Nagasaki. They are the Empire. Two second generation Joshi professional wrestlers, Emily Nagasaki, the daughter of the mysterious, the enigmatic, the hypnotic Kendo Nagasaki, half British, half Japanese, and em uh, sorry, Jessica Kidd, the daughter of Johnny Kidd, of the Johnny Kidd Invitational, one of the greatest practitioners of the technically sound scientific world of sport style. Emily Nagasaki, more of a, uh, a powerhouse, more of a brawler. So these two make a good stylistic comparison to each other, the portion of the tank, as they used to say at the Heart Foundation. The Empire coming into this with one point, a chance to not only get themselves closer to title contention, but to derail the chances of the Luchadoras. Tormenta de Fuego going to start us off. The Firestorm versus the, the technician, Jessica Kidd. 15 minutes on the clock, clock. Referee calls for the bell. Oh, wow. Single leg takedown. Kick away by Tormenta. Oh! British wrestling and British scientific wrestling. World of sports style. And the Lucha Libre style. There is no such thing as an AWL style. We welcome professional wrestlers of all varieties to the Animated Wrestling League. Irish Whip into the corner. What do we have here? Color and elbow tie-up. No tag made. You do not want to get into a grappling match with Jessica Kidd. You will lose that. 
as always, whenever we have these sort of clash of styles matches, it's going to come down to who wrestles their match. Is this going to be a high-flying Lucha Libre encounter? Is this going to be a Scientific World of Sport match? Whoever can answer that question is going to be the winner. What do we have here? Going for looks like a... Oh, no. Pile driver! And the referee says there was a... Was there a tag made? I'm not entirely sure. There's a tag made on the Empire side. And here comes the arm drag. Lucha Libre tradition. Long way to go for it. But highly effective, throwing the opponent all the way across that AWL 20 by 20 foot ring. Tormenta de Fuego still in control. Emily Nagasaki, I think more of a match for Tormenta. As far as being the, oh, the powerhouse of being the explosive member of the team. Backdrop drive, oh, beautiful reversal by Emily Nagasaki, who comes back with a backdrop of her own. Short, stocky, powerful. Uh oh. And now a pile driver of. Oh! Sit out, neckbreaker tombstone. Incredibly dangerous, but a tribute to the skill of Emily Nagasaki that she could actually pull off that maneuver without injuring her opponent. Kamehameha! Fireball punch by the Firestorm of Lucha Libre. Momento de Fuego, now going for the, no she's not. And so far Joya has not seen any action in this contest. Standard tag team jockeying for position, who can get their tag Kogeki in? It's gonna be, uh oh, going for another cradle pile driver, package pile driver, oh with a super kick to emphasize. And a diving tag, Nagasaki makes the tag to Kid, Jessica Kid, and Joya. This is a match I would love to see one-on-one, -on -one, quite frankly. But the tag team division, we are looking for contenders. We are looking for challengers at AWL 300 in the Tokyo Dome, our season finale, that we will hopefully, question mark maybe, get to by the end of the calendar year. And then of course, beyond that, it's almost time for the 2020 New Year's Tournament. The biggest night in the AWL calendar, literally. 16 wrestlers will compete. The top 15 win-loss records, plus a debuting brand new pro wrestler will compete in a single elimination tournament. for the ultimate glory. A little bit of strategy being discussed here. Emily Nagasaki having words with Jessica Kidd. Can't quite tell what they're saying here. Says go for the submission and she does it. Manji Gatame. Octopus hold, whatever you want to call it. A lucky escape, I would say, by Joya into a fireman's carry. Across the top rope, throat first. The mask will provide zero protection there. This is not good. What is it? Oh! Oh! What the heck was that? Can British Destroyer into a backstabber. What do we call that, the, the Brexit breaker or something? Joya with a flurry of offense, attempting to regain control of the contest. Fighting primarily on instinct now, I think. Cutter, jewel cutter, diamond cutter, if you will, by Joya. Jewel cutter, we'll call that. Somebody else already has diamond cutter. Oh, that's an interesting version of a wrist lock. Into a hammerlock wrist lock. I don't think I've ever seen that submission before. But Joya with a powerful escape. Improvised, obviously. Because if I've never seen it before, I'm pretty sure Joya hasn't either. Tag made. Tormenta de Fuego in. You see multiple angles of attack here. Double kick. Well, a kick and a knee strike, actually. Into the ministerial suplex with a hook of the leg. Fisherman suplex. Perfect plex. 
not so perfect as it only results in a two count cover. Referee out of position. One, two. That was more than three seconds, but the referee's count is what counts. The referee's decision final and sacrosanct even when he screws up. We have your up. Oh, no, 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 no. Burning Hammer! Into the cover. One, two, and barely a kick out. All four women in the ring. The referee has to get control of this. Your legal combatants are Jessica Kidd and Tormenta de Fuego. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm not going to edit that. Tag made. Emily Nagasaki now legal against Tormenta. Don't know why you think you have to go off the ropes or to stomp on somebody, but hey, it works. <clears throat> Vertical suplex. Oh! Vertical suplex powerbomb. Holy crap. Jessica Kidd and Emily Nagasaki both showing us things I don't think we've ever seen from, certainly from either of them, if not ever. Round the world we go. Cover on the sun, fifth flip. Oh, dang. Have you, have you figured out that I've got a cold yet? Oh, no, what is this? Oh! That, oh, God, that's going to break a neck. That set, I completely forgot to do the time call, didn't I? One, two, just under seven minutes remaining. These four women have been going at it absolutely. Okay, I can't, ovaries to the wall, let's say. And there's the tag, forearm to forearm. That's legal. What is, the, oh, God, what is this supposed to be? Oh! Excellent tag team wrestling. One, two, Three, and the Empire moves into contendership position. They'll still need one more point. Here are your winners, now with two points, the Empire. As the men face the possibility of termination, the women rise to the top of the tag team division. Speaking of the women, it's time for a reshuffle match. I love these. Three falls to a finish. The last woman standing will be the number one contender. We'll have two members of the Monster Union faction in this four-way elimination contest. We're starting off with the young, the young kitty cat from the realm of the yokai. The following contest is scheduled for three falls. Because it is a reshuffle match in the Joshi division. Introducing first, she is the number one contender in the AWL Best Four, representing Monster Union, Neko Musume. Neko Musume will have to go against her stablemate and her tag team partner. That's going to be Wild Thing, who I believe will be out next as the number two contender. The current number two contender. We will have an updated best four graphic for you at the end of this match. Because this could reshuffle everything. Loser of the first fall will be the number four contender. Loser of the second fall, number three. Loser of the third and final fall, number two. The winner of the final fall will be the number one contender in the Joshi division. Introducing next, Mickey Herwin Marie, from Transylvania, also representing Monster Union. He is the number two contender in the end of the world, first four. Wild Thing! Wild Thing, as always, taking her sweet time getting to the ring. A little bit of a, a, a sense for the dramatics 
stalking her prey. <coughs> sometimes I hit the cough button in time, and sometimes I don't. Uh, get on with it. Wild Thing, a former multi-time challenger for the Joshi Championship and was part of the original Joshi Ladder Match that crowned the first champion in Akira Menene way back at uh, the Golden War 2018. Back in May of 2018. So she's been the cream of the crop. She's been at the upper levels of the Joshi division Basically, the entire time there's been a Joshi division in the AWL. And while she continues her very long and slow march to the ring, I'm going to go get a coffee. I'll talk to you guys later. And we're back, and for the first time, I wish we actually had commercials on this show. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you are seeing ads or commercials, please feel free to use an ad blocker on my videos. I do not monetize, not that I could monetize these if I tried, but I do not monetize these videos. So please, feel free to cheat the algorithm all you like. Introducing next. Making her with the ring from the island of Eskira. She is the number three contender in the AWL first four. Athena Jay! And while you're cheating the algorithm, please leave a like, a share, a subscribe. Leave us a comment. Let me know that somebody's actually watching this. As the modern day Amazon, who we saw helping Jackie Molnu try to cheat against Akira Menene earlier tonight. Makes her way to the wing, the giantess of the Joshi division. And that's what annoys me. She doesn't have to cheat. She has all the tools to be a dominant force in any professional wrestling organization. And yet she finds the, the need to shortcut, to cheap shot, to attack outside the ring, to attack in the hallway. Cost herself a shot at the Joshi Championship several months ago because she was attacking so many of her opponents outside the confines of a sanctioned professional wrestling match. And now something that you may have noticed, and if you've been following the AWL as you should be, you'll realize this isn't right. And finally, making her win the ring from the Unified School of the Tiger Style, is the number four contender in the AWL Best Four, Spurring Tiger! You read that graphic correctly, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, the number four contender in the AWL Best Four of the Joshi Division uh, suffered a training injury that, according to our medical staff, Usachan is out for the remainder of the season. I deeply regret that, but unfortunately, that's just something that happens in professional sports sometimes. Uh, the AWL commissioner gave Usachan the opportunity to choose who would take her place in the best four, and she chose her tag team partner, Spring Tiger.
So we're going to have cat, dog, Amazon, and other cat violence. All four competitors in the ring. Extended time limit for this multi-man match. Or multi-woman match, I should say. And immediately somebody goes to the outside. It's Wolf and Tiger. And since that's happened, I may as well point out that in a reshuffle match, falls only count inside the ring. So keep you know, feel free to watch all the action, that's especially that's right out in front of me here at Commentation Station. But AWO <laughs> rules make it very clear. Notice the referee only focusing. Oh, wait a minute, STF here. Some mission opportunity on the Giantess immediately, but no, waved off by the official. In the event of a time limit draw, any remaining competitors will keep their rank. But any of these four women have the opportunity to go to AWL 300 and challenge Dragoness for the Joshi Championship. Right now it is Neko Musume, who is the number one contender with the most to lose. Cover on, Am on the Amazon, one! And Athena Jane, you're not gonna pin Athena Jane in less than two minutes, it just simply will not happen. And a cat scratch fever by the current number one contender and she's looking for the perfect landing. Proof that cats always land on their feet. One, two, three. Oh, no. Sidestepped at the last second, but an e-trembler by Nekomusume to the giantess. Meanwhile, the cats and dogs fighting on the outside. Cover by the Amazon. One. No, Nekomusume, the yokai, slip it out. Oh, oh, no. No, 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 no. Look at Wild Thing. Wild Thing. Oh, twisting DDT. Off of the apron, all the way down to the floor. We do have those black mats around the ring. Those are not particularly thick. They're only about an inch thick, provide very little padding. Mainly there to protect the floor of the arena from the, uh, the weight of the ring and the steps and everything. And right here now at the commentation station, Spring Tiger being smacked. A little bit of trash talk from Wild Thing saying, you don't belong here. And Spring Tiger trying to prove that yes, she does. And she could run the table and get all the way up to number one contender status. That would certainly prove that Usachan made the correct choice in replacement. Irish Whip into the corner trying to trap the Amazon, the modern day Amazon in a flurry of offense by Neko Musume. Taking the Giantess down to her back, everyone's the same height when they're flat on their back, luckily enough. One, two, still a kick out, and finally all four women return to the ring. Lariat by Spring Tiger, a couple of them. Nekomusume in the corner, super kick by the Tigress. Oh no, look at this. The modern day Amazon in a position of power. Oh, breaking Nekomusume in two. Nekomusume disoriented, getting out of the ring to protect herself. As the dominant combatants are now, oh wait a minute, sleeper hold, that could take the giant down. It does take her down, just doesn't take her out. Should we do it? I know I didn't do it the last couple of matches. But you know what? I think we will in 30 seconds. Wild thing now. The unpredictable, uncanny, lycanthropic offense. Oh, what is this going to be? Oh, wait a minute. Tries to hang her up. Oh! Face first goes Athena Jane. Deciding discretion, the wiser part of Valor. And going up, power bomb, no. Reversal of the power bomb. Into the count. No, broke it up. Go put it on, go put it on. Five minutes, five minutes possible. 
Yeah, I figured we'd do it. Mecha Musume and the Titan. Okay, three wrestlers on their feet now. We have yet to see an elimination five minutes into the contest. That only goes to show the level of competition here in the Joshi division. Don't worry, we will get to the men. We're going to include the men tonight. We've got two Atomicos matches, the semifinals, if you will, of the Losers Tournament of the Faction War. That will be coming up next. So far, a victory for Akira Menene on the road to redemption. The Empire moves within striking distance of championship contendership. And now we're looking for a definitive number one contender for the singles Joshi Championship. Multiple elbow strikes by the Tigress, by Spring Tiger. Now going for the figure four leg lock. Feline on feline violence. I can't say I approve of this, but you know, it is what it is. The two cat girls going at it. A reversal of fortunes, however. That is total bullshit. <laughs> By the way, the show ain't for kids, Papa. Let's get all four in the ring. Going for the cat. Catatonic. Catatonic into the cover for the possibly first fall of the match. One, two, three. Spring Tiger has been eliminated. And notice how the lycanthropic Wild Woman did not interfere in that. There's no real motivation to break up a pinfall here. Though a wrestler's instinct may kick in and they'll them. They might do it anyway. So Spring Tiger will retain the number four position in the AWL Best Four. It's also worth noticing that uh, noting that every victory here does count as a win in the win-loss records. So if Nekomusume, hypothetically, were to defeat both her tag team partner and the Giantess, then she would pick up three wins in the division. Oh! In the win-loss rankings. Death Valley Diver, double death! The return to Tartarus. The one, two, Three! And that's what it takes to knock off the former. Has been <clears throat> and that's what it takes to knock off the former number one contender. Now dropped to number three. Again, we'll have the updated graphic for you at the end of the match. And Wild Thing gonna fly all the way from the top down to the floor, avenging her feline associate. Oh! Elbow strike! Right to the crown of the head! All the way from the top down to the floor. Wild Thing is an absolute idiot. Yeah, keep punching. That, that, that's sure to work. Side rush and leg sweep. As Nekomusume finally realizing, oh crap, I just lost. Returning to the rings, returning to the locker room area. Six minutes and change remaining. Plenty of time for these two to settle their differences, shall we say. Nothing the referee can do here. The match cannot end on the outside. There are no count outs in a reshuffle match because I really can't make that happen. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Not again. We saw this earlier. The Spring Tiger and now almost twisting her right through that steel turn post. Steel ring post there. Oh, Mongolian Chop blocked. Transylvanian chop locked, I should say. These two have been wrestling for 10 minutes straight now. Fatigue a factor. This match may come down to who gets tired first, and neither of these two wrestlers are entirely human, so their level of stamina greater than you might expect. Gopun nokori, gopun nokori, five minutes, five minutes left. You hear the time call, the wrestlers hear it as well. <clears throat> we also have clocks set up around the ring. There's one here at Commentation Station, one by the bell ringer, and of course the referee will give the, and of course we've got the big clock 
up on the screen as well. So the wrestlers do know how much time they've got left, at least if they're looking where they should be. And eventually one or both of these idiots is gonna realize they've gotta get themselves and the other back into the ring. And uh, I don't even know what that was, a choke takedown of some kind, a goozle, a goozle STO, I guess, maybe? Multiple shots in the small of the back, kick to the back of the knee. Going up, down. Back breaker across the knee of the modern day Amazon standing over a potentially slain werewolf. And now you've got to get Wild Thing back into the ring to actually pin her. And the fireman's carry, that's what it's for. Oh no, another return to Tartarus, the double death of the Death Valley driver, this time on the outside. And very little time remaining here. Now, in the event of a time limit draw at this point, Wild Thing would be the number one contender because she started off at the higher rank. These two started off as two and three, respectively, Wild Thing and Athena Jane. So they would become one and two, respectively, if the time hits zero. Sampunokri, Sampunokri, three minutes, three minutes left. We'll get a two and a one minute call as well. And this all important reshuffle match. This is what these women are willing to put themselves, their bodies, not to mention each other, and each other's bodies through to become the number one contender to the Joshi Championship. And you know Dragoness, not to mention Akira Marine, is going to be watching this from the back. It's going to be a sellout of the monitor. Two minutes, 20 seconds left. Plenty of time. As finally our wrestlers return to the ring. We can actually have a wrestling match instead of a, you know, grievous bodily assault. Spear into the corner. Nippon no kuri, Nippon no kuri. Two minutes. Two minutes left. And Wild Thing off of the red rope. Into the Tornado DDT. Brilliant technique this late in the contest. But still Athena Jane gets to her feet. Unbelievable. They've been wrestling for nearly 15 minutes. Professional wrestling. The most intense cardio workout in, the, in all of sports. There is nothing that prepares you, you know, there's, there's, there's in gym shape and then there's ring shape. The cardio on both of these women, absolutely incredible. And there you see it going once again for the double depth. Return to Tartarus. A fall of the gods could end it here, but it could end right now. One, two, Three, no need for the one minute call because we have a winner. Here is your winner and the new number one contender, Athena Jane. Athena Jane goes from number three to number one. There you see the updated graphic. Athena Jane, Wild Thing, Nekamusume, and Spring Tiger, the best four of the Joshi division and after an incredible marathon of a contest like that there's no doubt that any of them are misplaced and now a match in a tournament that you don't want to continue and this is unfortunate because we've got three Technico teams in this uh, in this situation the international heroes the following contest is an Atomicos match scheduled for one call. And it is the first match in the Losers Tournament. Introducing first, the Atomicos combination of the Arab American Dream, Hassan. The most Canadian man in the world, here in Canada. The Shining Legacy, El Hio Del Magico. And Australian Dynamite, 
Michael Dunn. Together they are Seikai Goon. The winners of this One Fall Atomicos match are safe. They will leave the tournament with their careers intact, their contracts still valid. The losers of this One Fall Eight Man Tag Team Atomicos match will go to the season finale at the Tokyo Dome and will have to fight with four pink slips at stake. Kubi Kessen, I think we could call that. Out of their opponent, the Atomicos combination of Tiger Ball 2, Tiger Zadar 2, Key Tiger Junior, and Black Tiger Justice. Together they are, the Unified of the Tiger Style. Two generations of the Tiger Dynasty, gold and black, brought together. Four different combinations of tag team champions represented here. Tiger Mask Double, the Tiger Brothers, the Black School of the Tiger Style, and even Tiger Mask 2 alongside Okada Kazuchika have held the Tag Team Championship of the World. But now they're fighting for survival. And it's going to be the team captain starting us off. Hassan, oh, sidesteps a running charge from Tiger Mask 2. Irish whip off of the ropes. Tag Team strategy changes completely in this eight man 30 minute time limit match because there's always going to be somebody to tag there's always going to be a fresh man to tag there's always going to be somebody to come in and break up a fall so this could go for a while and it was double underhook tigers reverse tiger suplex we'll call that tiger mask 2 season zero original as is hassan been with the AWO. Both these guys been with the AWL since the, pretty much the very beginning. Tiger Mask trying to fight out of the enemy territory. Stay on his side. Oh, reversal. Up. German suplex. Didn't feel he could go for the, uh, the double chicken wing there. Tiger Mask started off as Puma, a, a refugee from Wrestling Society X back in season zero, became Tiger Jr., apprentice to the original AWL Tiger Mask, then became Tiger Mask 2 upon the retirement of his mentor. Off the ropes, up, down! Big back body drop, and the biggest man in the match, I believe, now in and legal, we're going to see a tag here. Yes, we are. And yes, the, the, the two big men of the teams, the respective squads. Backbreaker by Taiga Zadaku, trained by Global Wrestling Monopoly, the Tiger's Den, to be a killer. Saw the error of his ways, joined the Animated Wrestling League. What do we have here? Oh, dragon screw leg whip. And a double dragon screw. We'll move a bit of a receipt there. And I'd love all of these tag teams that we've seen tonight. I would love to see one-on-one -on -one matches between some of these characters. And I mean characters because these are some weird personalities. We've got a, a former professionally trained assassin. A second generation luchador who only just got his father back from the horde of zombies. I would hate to see the shining legacy extinguished. Oh, wait a minute! Going for the Tiger's faint kick! And nails it and double damage as Australian Dynamite taken down as Darkness Falls on the shining legacy of El Hio de Majiku. And in come the Tigers. The gold school of the Tiger style. Responding to the call of Taiga Zadaku. 
Boom! Triple power bomb. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw that multiple times in this in the rest of the night. One. Broken up by the Arab American Dream. He gets sent out of the wing the hard way for his trouble. And Michael Dunn with a backdrop on the Season Zero original, Tiger Mask 2. European uppercut. Lariat out and over. There are no Lucha Tag rules here as the Luchador gonna fly. What is he thinking? Oh, I don't know what he was thinking, but it didn't work. Backbreaker. Countouts are in effect here. Oh, and I think blood hath been drawn, ladies and gentlemen. And under a full face mask like that, if El Hio de Magico is in fact bleeding, that's going to pool up. That's going to be very, very dangerous. Especially since we don't know where he's bleeding. Is it over the eye? Is it the nose? Is it the mouth? We have no clue here. No submissions on the outside, so this is irrelevant except for the fact it's going to tear away at the small of the back, going to tear away at the quadriceps of El Hio del Magico. Who fortunately has the leg strength to break out. And I'm going for a figure four headlock. Again, why are you doing this on the outside? This is dumb. Get back in the ring. Vertical suplex attempt, snap vertical suplex. Go for him, K-Con. Go for him, K-Con. Five minutes. Five minutes past stop. 30 minutes on the clock, 25 remain. <clears throat> a triple diving tag. Everybody call for the tag, and it's Australian Dynamite. Michael Dunn from Darwin, Australia, representing the World Army Sekai Gun. And a flurry of offense. On a former Intercontinental Champion, former Tag Team Champion as well. And Michael Dunn, who has not had the most successful career in the AWL, only finding victory of any form since joining with Sekai Gun. Michael Dunn, a graduate of the AWL Dojo, joined the AWL right before we were bought out temporarily by Global Wrestling Monopoly. That was a dark day in the history of the Animated Wrestling League. 24 minutes remain. <clears throat> Michael Dunn looking maybe for Bangarang, his finishing maneuver. If he could hit that, he could actually get... Yes, going for Bangarang, no! Blocked. Blocked and denied by Taiga Zadaku, who at this point is going to be thinking Darkness Driver. At least I certainly hope he is. Right hand by the underdog, the Australian underdog. Underdog, underdog. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's been a long night. It's been a long week. It's been a long... It's been a long year. Wrestle Maths in the corner. For a variation thereupon. Miss with the stomp. A lariat. Uh, followed by a fist drop. And what do we have here? Juji Ganabe. Can he hyperextend the elbow? No, I don't think he can as Tiger Zadok able to roll through and sneak away. Powerbomb, I think. Yes! Powerbomb into the cover. One, two. No, but he, he hangs on to the legs and turns into a Boston Crab. Classic combination. But the damage done to the small of the back of Australian Dynamite. Tiger Zadok has been picking apart the members of Seikai Gun. Focusing on the small of the back. No tag for you, says Australian Dynamite, Michael Dunn. And yeah, there we go. Hammerlock Lariat turning his opponent inside out, showing incredible strength. Michael Dunn in great shape. And, oh, wait, here we go. Sasuosa, Bangarang! Bangarang, Bangarang, Boomerang, Didgeridoo, Australian word. One, two, three, no! 
Two and a half, says the referee. Two and inches, making sure Tiger Mask knows he's still in the match. Tiger the Dark still alive in here, rolls to his stomach to avoid being pinned. That's instinct now. Tag made to the most Canadian man in the world, former AWL Grand Champion, former Tag Team Champion as well, Irish Whip. Into enemy territory, trying to cross the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse of the wrestling ring. Snapmare into a kick right to the spine. The most technically sound wrestler in this organization, in this match, in this set of eight competitors. The last master of the dungeon, Canadian Destroyer! That would be it. He has to pull him away from the ropes. And decide to do some extra damage just to make sure he stays down. Tiger the Dark needs to make a tag here as Kid Canada looking for the Canadian Crunch. And oh, he misses it! But more accurately, the Tiger gets out of the way. Indie Neckbreaker! Stomp away at the mask, stomp at the nose, stomp at the face. The only person in the AWL ever stretched by Stu Hart. Kid Canada, Irish whip into the corner, Lariat! And still no tag, Tiger the Dark needs to make a tag here. He's thinking he has an opportunity perhaps for a darkness driver. And oh, Black Tiger suplex! One, two, Kick out by the Canadian. Tiger, you got a tag. I think he finally realizes it. And so far, the juniors, the Tiger brothers, have not made an appearance legally in this contest. It's been between Tiger Mask W. Irish whip into the Seikai Gooden corner. By the way, if you'd like one of those Seikai Gun t-shirts, they're available at merchandise kiosks throughout the building. In comes Hassan. Now all four members of Seikai Gun have been legal in the match. 19 minutes. Jupun Kekong, Jupun Kekong. 10 minutes, 10 minutes past Ah, uh, Yeah, plus a minute, dude, you were late. I'm pretending to time you for something else. Now wait, there was a tag there, and now we've got, for the first time, one of the apprentices, one of the Deshi. Ty Sheen Tiger Jr. Sheen meaning new Tiger Jr. And of course, Tiger Jr., the Tiger Mask 2's original name as a part of the Tiger Dynasty. Which means I think it's safe, but while it's safe to say that Sheen Tiger Jr. being groomed to become the, uh, the third Tiger Mask, eventually... All four of their careers are on the line. Tiger's jaw. The Tiger's jaw biting away at Hassan. Thinking Tiger Bomb, perhaps. No, we're thinking Tiger Suplex. Hold up. He's got a good transition to the waist lock. The bridge broken, however, by Kid Canada. Irish. We're going to see another tag here. No, we're not. If Hassan has anything to say about it, and he does, Tiger Zadok goes down on the outside. Hold for hold, blow for blow here, ladies and gentlemen. Paradigm shift! He sought the laws of the paradigm shift! But the leg of Tiger Mask, I'm sorry, of Sheen Tiger Jr. The leg under the ropes, therefore the referee does not make a count. Bad ring positioning by the Arab American Dream, who's now got a hammer lock. They easily elbowed out. Round we go, the helicopter head scissors. 17 minutes on the clock. In the event of a time limit draw, there will be a captain's tiebreaker. In that case, this would be Hassan versus Tiger Mask 2 
with the loser advancing to the Tokyo Dome with career on the line. This is the tournament you don't want to get to the finals of. And wait a minute, we've seen them do this before out of nowhere, the double darkness driver! And I say out of nowhere because Tiger Mask flying into the sky, flying into the stratosphere. One, two, broken up by the Shining Legacy. Who gets a re no. Her regular Hurricane Rana for his trouble pop. It's going to be like a uh, reverse Hurricane Rana there. Tag made back to Tiger Mask 2. And the Tigers doing a good job of keeping each other fresh after that marathon session with Tiger the Dark. Snap there by the Arab American Dream. Kick to the spine. Penalty kick, if you will. Tag made in comes most Canadian man in the world. He has maple syrup in his veins, and he craps poutine. He's the most Canadian man in the world. He runs around with knives on his feet even when he's not playing hockey. He's the most Canadian man in the world. He thinks of all locations only in terms of intersection, including his own toilet. He's the most Canadian man in the world, and he just got a Tiger Breaker by Tiger Mask 2. Irish whip into the corner. Oh no, 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 no. On the outside, it's about to hit the 15 minute mark. Halfway through the time limit. Drive by! Running drop kick to the outs on the outside. And now Tiger looking maybe. Yeah, he's thinking the Tiger style. Moon sunk up at the knees! Knees, 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 knees! You go for no You put go no You go for no You go for no 15 minutes. 15 minutes left. Yeah, I kind of botched that, didn't I? We are at the halfway point of the time limit for this match. One fall to a finish. Leg drop by the most Canadian man in the world to Tiger Mask 2. So far, I think the uh, on points, if we were to be judging this on points, I think it goes to Seikai Gun. And now trying to stretch him like Stu would do back in the old dungeon. Kate Canada with the complicated looking submission, but the Tiger escapes. Kate Canada in a bit of trouble here as Tiger Mask retakes control of the contest and brings everything back over to his side of the ring. Tag made, and it's Tiger Zadaku who's had more ring time than any other Tiger in this match so far. Maybe that was a bad strategic decision by Tiger Mask 2, we shall see momentarily. And get, that's the exact same submission. And that's not a tap out, says the referee, and that's the exact same escape. Tiger's a doc saying, anything you can do, I can do better, except that it wasn't better, so yeah. Wait a minute, Canadian Destroyer! The most Canadian man in the world with the most Canadian move in the world. The Canadian Destroyer. I know everybody uses that now. The credit to Team Canada, Petey Williams, for coming up with that. And here comes the Tigers. They did this earlier. The Gold School in service of a Black Tiger. Old School, nobody would have ever believed that would happen. Into the cover. Hassan into the ring, one. Broken up by the Arab American Dream, the team captain, coming to save the match. And that's why we put a 30 minute time limit on these faction war contests, because obviously, well, yeah, it's gonna take wh a while to beat four guys. And Kid Canada crawling in the wrong direction, gets back to his feet. Sends the Tiger over the top rope. Both feet, everybody down to the floor. Both competitors on the floor. The referee's count begins. I will remind you, this match can end via countout, though nobody wants to see that. If it's a double countout, then we will have to have the captain's tiebreaker. That will be next week. And yes, I know we just crossed the one hour mark on the episode. However, we do still have another match coming up next. It uh, will be Matt Classic Sr. and the Technicos versus the Empire.
including the special guest tag team of Mustache Mountain. That's going to be our main event that will happen at the conclusion of this match, which will be sometime in the next 12 minutes. These two combatants not even pretending to have a wrestling match right now. This is just a fight. And down goes Taiga Zadaku. Referees count up to legs 11. Rolls him back into the ring. Both competitors return. Tag from the teacher to the student. BTJ Brock Taiga Justice. Breaking the laws of physics with a spin kick. Seriously, what the heck just happened there? ETJ finally in the contest looking for. Yes, he's got it. Black Taiga Busta! He beat Okada Kazuchika with that move to win the tag team titles. But thanks to Shining Legacy, who gets dumped. He gets potatoed on the outside. Big splash, high elevation. Gravity assisting where body weight doesn't. That's what's so dangerous about these Atomicos matches. One tag and everything changes. Into the neutral, off of the, over the rope, sorry, not into the neutral corner, collar and elbow tie up. Do not want to get into a wrestling match with Kid Canada or a grapple fest with Kid Canada. And we're right back where we started. Kid Canada, who's known for his prowess within the ropes, is going to the outside a lot this match. Was this a strategy that Seikai Gun had coming into this? I don't know. Jupun Nokuri, Jupun Nokuri. 10 minutes, 10 minutes left. 10 minutes on the clock. Elbow strike, kick. Multiple kicks by Ty Black Tiger Justice, BTJ. Returning Kid Canada to the ring, plenty of time. And well within the 20 count. Man, Ty Tiger Mouth 2 looks about half dead. Knee DT by the youngster. We call him Kid Canada, but he's a grown man. He's been in the AWL since season two. We're now in season 15. Big DDT into a quick cover. Desperation maneuver. Only a one count. BTJ too fresh. Too little ring time for a quick DDT like that to be an effective finish to the match. And what's he doing now? Swinging neck breaker. Indie neck breaker, if you insist. No one's actually used that phrase in a while, have they? Oh, and now Kid Canada manhandling BTJ. This is why we used to have weight divisions. European uppercut by the Tiger Springboard into a kick. Absolutely beautiful aerial offense by BTJ. Oh, wait a minute. BTJ going up. Down. Knee drop from the top. From the highest of heights. Right here in front of Commentation Station. Black Tiger Justice, the first to his feet. And in we go. And here comes the, ta the tag to his former T49P partner. The origin of Seikai Gun, Team 49th Parallel. This international organization now in danger of being completely eliminated from the Animated Wrestling League. Dragon Suplex! ETJ looking for a Black Tiger Buster on Hassan. That will end the match, I'm pretty sure. And Hassan knows that too. Lariat! Hanson-esque Lariat. A paradigm shift could also end this right here, right now. Paradigm shift! He's Satsuaza. The paradigm shift from the Arab American babyface for the one, two. And he was calling it a paradigm shift long before Moxley came on the scene. Take that AEW, not that anybody from AEW watches this. Irish Whip into the corner. If they did watch this, they'd have hired me as a writer by now. Seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining, headbutt. Going for possibly the running drop kick. Seikai Gun trying to run defense, they're not gonna get it. Hassan in trouble now. Everybody in the ring. Referee starting to lose control of this. Seven minutes on the clock. Tiger Mask and Kid Canada. 
as Kit, oh, Hurricane Rana. Your legal combatants, ladies and gentlemen, to Hassan and BTJ. And now Tiger the Dark hit on Kid Canada as well. Big body drop. Hassan in control. Dragon screw leg whip. Kid Canada out. Uh-oh, Fireman's Carry going for the American Samoa drop. Countered into an inverted DDT by BTJ. Calling in the wrong direction, he sees the Shining Legacy. And in comes El Hio Del Magico, misses with the clothesline. But not with the drop kick. BTJ fighting off everything Seikai Gun has to throw at him. A second generation star, a third generation in a dynasty. Oh, Juji Gatame! Juji Gatame! So called because it resembles the kanji for the number 10, which is Ju, of course, 10, and G character, the 10 character hold. And now looking possibly for. The Shining Legacy, that, that would definitely be the end of the match. Five and a half minutes. Springboard, is, corkscrew escape, but not for long. Tag made in comes Sheen Taiga Jr. with a lariat of his own. And a drop kick. The Tigers are falling one by one. The Tigers are falling one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The Tigers are falling one by one, hurrah, hurrah. Where did that come from? Tiger's jaw, biting down on the head, the neck, the throat, the face of El Hio del Magico. Gopu Nokri, Gopu Nokri, five minutes, five minutes left. And setting up, going behind, Tiger Suplex, hold on. Tiger Suplex hold on, one, two, broken bridge again. The Sensei not able to make the break, not able to save the match. Irish whip, but we haven't seen much in the way of Tag Kogeki. But, and they're not going to right now. Cheap shot to BTJ. And a fully assembled Seikai gun. Oh goodness gracious, the tree of woe. Oh, no, 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 no. He's going to go the 20. Sheen Tiger Jr. struggling to get back to a vertical base. He is not getting there. Coast to coast drop kick by the Shining Legacy, El Hio Del Magico. And that could be it. I, yeah, BT, yeah. Sheen Tiger Jr., he's out. He's not moving. One. Two, three. The Tigers go to the Tokyo Dome and risk everything. Here are your winners, Seikai The only question now, who will join them? A well-deserved victory lap for Seikai Gun. But who will join the Tigers in the Dome? It's going to be one of these two teams, either going to be the Technicos, the New Classics, or the Empire. This is the main event tonight, ladies and gentlemen. All the marbles on the line here. The following contest is your main event of the evening. It is an Atomicos match, scheduled for one fall, and the second match in the Losers Tournament. Introducing first, the Atomicos combination of the reigning Animated Wrestling League Intercontinental Champion, Matt Classic Senior, the penultimate fighter, Lee Masters, the Suplex Master, Sandy Nix, and the Scion of Submission, Shiva Akagi. Together they are the two classics. I have had it confirmed that in the event that Matt Classic Sr. loses, 
his job while still AWL Intercontinental Champion, the title will be vacated and will be determined in Season 16 via a scramble match, a six-man scramble match, just as if the title had been cashed in. Four of the best, most technically sound professional wrestlers in the world, a trio that dates back to season zero, and uh, Chiba Akagi, also now part of the organization. We have heard this music play twice before, ladies and gentlemen. And that was the entrance and the victory of the female members of the Empire. However, the Tokyo Athletic Commission does not permit intergender wrestling within, the, within uh, this part of the city. And therefore, Mustache Mountain being brought in fellow Our British competitors. The Atomicus combination of Frederick Victor, Big Cherry, Trent Seven, and Tyler Bates, together they are, the Empire! It is still an unanswered question, what will happen to the Empire members Jessica Kidd and Emily Nagasaki if the Empire loses their jobs at the Tokyo Dome? Obviously that's not an immediate situation, because we don't know who's going to win this match, but... If that does happen, will the women be fired because the men lost the tournament the women weren't allowed to compete in? That would be an absolute disaster. That would be a miscarriage of justice, in my opinion, but I'm not the commissioner. That's going to be up to the AWL commissioner, and hopefully um, in the event it becomes necessary, if the Empire loses this Atomic Coast match, we do hope to have that information for you by our next episode. By AWL 294. And we're off, main event, a team captain, Matt Classic Sr. versus the team heavy, Big Jerry. Matt Classic Sr., he knows how to fight men bigger than himself. He's done a good chunk of his career. I don't know if he's ever faced anyone quite the size of Big Jerry. The working class warrior realizing his livelihood is on the line here. Former British Openweight Champion, former AWL Tag Team Champion. Matt Classic, of course. The reigning Intercontinental Champion, a former AWL World's Heavyweight Champion as well. And a tag made to a former AWL Grand Champion in Sammy Nix, one of two on the new Classic team. Big Jerry now. As is the want, as is the tradition of the Empire, Tagging in Frederick Victor. Dragon screw leg whip. Big Jerry does the work. Fred Victor comes in to take the glory. That's the uh, that's the business arrangement with these two. Going for a DDT. Sammy Nix, who I believe pound for pound the strongest wrestler in the AWL. Able to counter that with great ease. And of course, Bait and Trent. Not, uh, not doing anything here. They're only, they're getting paid to be here. Frederick Victor, I don't know where he gets the money, but Frederick Victor, well known for, uh, you know, basically buying the friends he can't make on his own. Irish Whip, in the court. seriously, I've, I've shared a, I, I've shared a catering, I've, well, I've shared a drinking party with uh, Frederick Victor over the years, several of them, and uh, frankly, he's an asshole. <laughs> All the social graces of a head of cabbage. Two minutes in, and so far, I think it's been mostly new classics, though. Frederick Victor, he calls himself the master of the world of sports style. I wouldn't go that far, but he is actually quite a skilled scientific wrestler. He knows his holds, he knows his submissions, he knows his escapes. He's not that bad. He could have done well in the Royal Albert Hall back in the day.
Sammy Nicks. Uh oh, what do we have here? Deadlift, gut wrench, suplex. He holds on. He's going to go for a full hat trick. He goes for two. He's going to float over. Yes, he does. Going for the hat trick suplex. Subtype. Gut wrench. That's what we call. Every time you see Sammy Nicks compete, it's a clinic in high impact suplex wrestling. Ger no, escape. Escape of the German. I told you he knows his counter wrestling. And rolls straight through into a juicy Gatame of his own. He may be an asshole. He may not have any friends. He may be a corrupt little snard. But he knows his wrestling. He can do the wrestling. Butterfly suplex by a former New Year's tournament winner, Sammy Nix. Into the corner and kick right to the face. Surprised that hasn't busted open a lip so far. Oh, wait a minute. A big Jerry pulling Sammy Nix out of the ring. A little dirty team, double team action, though I got to. I can't. I, part of me really can't blame the Empire for getting dirty here because their jobs are on the line. This isn't about a title. This isn't about sportsmanship. This isn't about the win loss rankings, though this does count in the win loss rankings. This is about, you know, do you put food on your family's table tomorrow? Or more accurately, after AWL 300. Elbow strike, spinning drop kick, barely connects. Butterfly suplex. And of course, every one of these suplexes is gonna hurt more because it's out on the floor. Roll back into the ring. Just like the last match is can end by count out. Oh, all competitors gonna be aware of that tag made. And in comes Trent Severn the larger member of the Mustache Mountain Tag Team, former Chikara Campeon de Parejas. Uh oh, going for a pile driver. By God, it's gonna be a pile driver. Don't know why I went into the terrible JR impression there. For some reason I associate that sort of pile driver with Southern wrestling, not British strong style. Tag made in comes the inventor of professional wrestling, at least in the United States, German. He's hanging on to him. No. Oh, Rainmaker! A British Rainmaker. It does rain a lot in Britain, so that makes a lot of sense. Go put no. Sorry. Go put cake on. Go put cake on. Five minutes. Five minutes pasta. And now a modified clover leaf. Of course, Classic knows the counter to that. He probably invented the counter to that. Knife edge chop. Going for an airplane spin, perhaps, but no, inverted DDT counter. That's the thing, whenever you, you fight one of these British guys, they know their fundamentals. They know how to counter pretty much any standard hold. So you have to get creative. And Matt Classic, eh, he's not the most creative guy in the world. Let's just be honest here. But he is one of the strongest. Oh, and one of the toughest. He's the world's oldest professional wrestler. But he's still got what it takes, a grab of the tights. How is that legal pile driver? Trent Seven has frankly put on a little bit of weight since I saw him last. That's only gonna help him in this situation against a brawler like Matt Classic. Oh, this is not good. Oh wait, Classic with a shot to the face. Takes his opponent down with almost a lariat cutter fall drop thingamabob. Now we have Mustache Mountain lose at uh, the... F oh wait, Trapezius Claw! Classic Claw, Trapezius style. He likes to use this. This is a psychological move as much as a physical. Because that's gonna warn the opponent. You think this is bad, wait till you get the actual Classic Claw. 23 minutes on the clock. The midsection going for the Fireman's Carry. And he got an airplane spin of his own. I thought Matt Classic was the last wrestler in the world to use the airplane spin. Irish whip into the corner. What do we have here? Tag possible? No, says Classic. 
In neither of these Atomic Ghost matches have we seen much in the way of Tag Kogeki, though that is a specialty of the new Classics tag team of Lee Masters and Sammy Nix in the blue and orange trunks, respectively. You gotta think if one of those two makes... Oh! Huge clothesline into the cover! One! Two! And Classic kicks out two and a half. Half a second between safety and having to risk your career. Back to that clover leaf. Notice how uh, Severn doesn't have his fingers locked here, so he's basically relying on friction, and that's what allows Matt Classic to escape. And Classic needs to make a tag, but I don't think his ego's gonna allow that. You hit me with that pile drop, I'm gonna hit you with a power bomb. Stacks his opponent up. All the weight on the shoulders. Broken up by the ca the technical captain of the team, Frederick Victor with a cross body block. Got like five men in the ring. Referee needs to get some kind of control over this. There was no tag made. Your legal combatants, Matt Classic and Trent Seven. There's no uh, standing 10 count in the AWL. They're gonna wait for one of these guys to get back to their feet. And they both do, but again, Matt Classic not willing to make the tag here. He's not a tag team specialist. I don't believe he's ever held a tag team title. Classic Claw! There's the Claw! The Classic Claw locked in! The Classic Claw, seven with nowhere to go. And this ain't his career. And just like that, the new classics save themselves from the dome. The Empire will risk their careers. The new classics. At AWL 300, it will be the Empire versus the Unified School of the Tiger style. All four of the losers leave the AWL. Thank you for watching. Kore de Kimarida.